Hi, this is Marxist Leninist Theory, and this time we're gonna be talking about the dictatorship of the proletariat, and the Marxist and Marxist Leninist understanding uh, of the state in general. So, what is the state? According to Marxism Leninism, the state is a mechanism that the ruling class uses to oppress its enemies. Essentially, it's a body of armed men. In the context of capitalism, the state exists mainly to ensure the property rights of the property class. Basically, just keeping the poor and hungry away from the food they can't afford, the homeless away from the houses they can't afford, etc. Marxist Leninists also argue that the state doesn't always need to exist. So the state is an instrument of the ruling class. What is this class? Lenin pointed out that every state has a class character. It's not just a state in general, it's a state with a particular class character. In capitalism, the state is run by the rich capitalists. They control the economy, the media, and the politicians. Of course, they don't control all of those areas completely, but they control enough to stay in power. The politicians who serve the interests of the rich get the most funding for campaigns and therefore have a better chance of winning elections and so on. The media corporations owned by the rich, are assuming they have programming about politics, of course, reflect the views of the rich for the most part. This was called by Lenin the dictatorship of the bourgeois, the dictatorship of the capitalists. It can also be a bourgeois democracy or something along those lines, but it's referring to the same thing. The key characteristic is that it's controlled by the bourgeois. Uh, the word democracy there is referring to the form of government, as in it's a system with a parliament and not, for an example, an absolute monarchy. It doesn't mean actual democracy. It just refers to the type of government. Marxism-Leninism views the capitalist state as a dictatorship because although it has a parliamentary system, it's still basically all controlled by the rich. As I said, they control most of the economy, the mass media, politics, largely even the education system and so on. And this is not some conspiracy, it's actually quite obvious if you just look around. Uh, the United States is a good example of this fake democracy. They have basically a two-party system and everyone always complains about it, but they don't really know why it exists and what to do about it. Essentially, when you vote, you can choose between two capitalists, uh, two capitalist parties, two parties that in the global scale are actually both very right-wing, two parties that are both receiving funding from the same corporations. Uh, the parties may disagree on some issues somewhat, and even when they don't, uh, they might act like they do to garner support, but they both represent basically the same interests, the interests of the rich. Other parties exist, but they don't have the funding, uh, they don't get the exposure on the media, and so on. The situation is very similar in other countries. Uh, I'll use Finland as an example because I live here. We have three major parties, the Coalition Party, the Social Democrats, and the Center Party. They're all capitalist parties. We also have other parties, but those are the main ones that get all the money and all the attention in the media. Three parties basically always stay in power. One loses popularity to the others over time and they take turns, basically. At the moment we have a government of Coalition and the SDP the supposed left party together with the right-wing party, so it's, yeah, that should tell you something already. It's the uh, so-called social democrats with, with the most right-wing party in the same government. Uh, there are much more overt signs of bourgeois dictatorship too, like the outright banning of communist parties in, in many countries or limiting their work, or using police terror, uh, like in South Korea, United States, and so on. But often the bourgeois propaganda that everyone is subjected to constantly and the fact that people don't really get exposed to communist views are enough so that they don't need this kind of overt terrorism and overt dictatorship, uh, that they can just rely on this covert dictatorship. Okay, so what is the dictatorship of the proletariat then? The bourgeois try to make us believe that the capitalist state is a democracy where everyone has the same rights, uh, although all reality points to the contrary. We know that according to Marxism-Leninism, every state has a class character and is controlled by one class to suppress the other, whether it be the nobility, the capitalists, or the workers. Uh, we Marxists want to establish a dictatorship of the working class, uh, the dictatorship of the proletariat. This term dictatorship can be misleading because the bourgeois use it to refer to a certain style of government. Uh, for example, Hitler's Germany, a government where one person or one small group control everything. Uh, that is not what Marxists mean with the term. We use it to refer to a class dictatorship, not a personal dictatorship. For example, the dictatorship of the proletarian class, i.e. a worker state. A state where the workers control the economy and the state machine. Despite the name, this is a democratic state. Democracy for the workers a new type of democracy, different from the bourgeois fake democracy. And here's a quote. 
freedom in a capitalist society always remains about the same as it was in ancient Greek republics, freedom from the slave owners. It's a state where the working class uses state power against the rich and against any attempts by the rich and their sympathizers to regain control over the society. This can take different forms and it doesn't necessarily mean not allowing the rich to vote, for example, but it can mean that as well. Uh, it can be a multi-party system, but it doesn't have to be. It can be either a direct or representative system. Um, I would prefer a direct democracy one-party system myself. Um, I'll, I'll give you some examples. Um, in Cuba, the Communist Party doesn't take part in elections, like in a multi-party system. Uh, the workers' organizations like trade unions and neighborhood councils uh, select candidates to the People's Assembly, which is the parliament, and people vote for them. Uh, they can be members of the Communist Party, but they don't have to be. Uh, this to me is a pretty good system. So yeah, the party, it's not a multi-party system, there's you know, candidates, but the, the, the party doesn't really, the party is, uh, is separate from that. In the Soviet Union, the people could. In the Soviet Union, the people voted in local councils called Soviets, uh, which is the Russian word for council. They would elect representatives and local author local authorities that way. There also, the Communist Party was a separate entity from the parliament. Uh, the parliament was called the Supreme Soviet, and the election system. Although the candidates could be party members, but again, they didn't have to be. Um, like Cuba, the Soviet Union had universal suffrage with secret uh, secret ballot and officials were subject to recall, which is yeah something we don't really have in capitalism. Yeah, it's it's really common in capitalism that people realize afterwards after they've elected someone. Like let's look at Obama as an example. Everyone was so hyped when Obama first was elected, but now everyone's really cynical and disappointed. I mean, Mar Marxists weren't. Um, I mean, they didn't buy into it for a second, but uh, but uh, the general general public, they thought that uh, things were going to change, and then nothing, of course, changed. Once they elected Obama, they couldn't really change it afterwards, even though the demo uh, democratic thing would be to have new elections if the current president loses support. Another classic example of the dictatorship of the proletariat is the Paris Commune, where during the war between France and Prussia, the working population of Paris revolted and uh, founded a worker state. Just like Cuba and the Soviet Union, albeit much earlier, uh, they gave everyone the right to, vote, the right to one vote, no matter if you owned property, uh, and all government positions were subject to recall, which was quite different from uh, other states like colonial or semi-feudal Finland, as an example, uh, at, the, at the time, uh, had a system where all the different classes of society would uh, participate in, uh, I don't know what they were called, elections of some kind. Basically, uh, the peasants would have, or the the wealthy peasants, land-owning peasants, would have uh, one vote, and then the, the nobility and such would have one vote, one vote, and the bourgeois had one vote, and basically the they would always win over the peasantry, and uh, and the, the thing about that was that they would all, the peasantry was like the land-owning peasants, they were like 25 percent of the population, whereas the nobility was like two percent of the population. Still, the bourgeois nobility dominated. And uh, not to mention, like 75% of the population didn't even have a vote because they didn't, they weren't land-owning peasants, or aristocrats, or bourgeois. They were just peasants who rented land, peasants who worked on other people's land, agricultural workers, proletarians, or whatever. So the Paris Commune was extremely progressive in that way, even like compared to modern states. Okay, before I end, uh, let's do a quick recap. When Marxists talk about the bourgeois or pro proletarian dictatorship, they mean a dictatorship of one class, not one person or a one uh, clique. Every state has a class character. A state is an instrument that the ruling class uses to stay in power by controlling the legislative system, the economy, the army, the police force, etc. A proletarian dictatorship is a state where the workers control all those things, the economy, politics, the army, through various methods. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them. Uh, if you want to suggest topics, you can do so. They can be history related or questions about specific countries or parties or current events, but the focus will be on theory for now. Also, if you notice I've made a mistake, let me know. This series is based on my understanding of Marxism, Leninism, and I'm not perfect, so yeah. If you see that I've made a mistake, yeah, it would be helpful if you corrected me. Uh, one thing I try to do in the future, I would like to be able to have a 
quotes and uh, sources for everything I say because so it wouldn't be so heavily just relying on my understanding and I would actually have I would like to have something to back up what I'm saying basically because I'm all I'm constantly saying that according to Marxism Leninism this and that but it's actually like just my understanding of Marxism Leninism so I would in the future I would like to have some sources for all those things but finding the um, quotes and sources and stuff takes time but I'll attempt to do that in the future. Okay, bye now.